Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of the Unchained Vodcast, your source for hopefully quality discussion about whatever news, uh, game classes, information, whatever we have recently about Camelot Unchained. With me today, I have Chris, my uh, other main co-host. Uh, hey how guys. you doing, Chris? Ah, uh, pretty good. Pretty cold here. Uh, <laughs> since I moved, it's it's getting a lot colder. Is it colder than uh, where you moved from? I'm not really sure about the weather differences. Oh, yes, it is. Well, I'm a lot uh, farther north now, so I I'm in Birmingham, be, yeah. UK. So from Bordeaux, it's quite a while up. And uh, yeah, it started snowing yesterday, so colder. Yeah, Definitely. I wasn't entirely sure exactly where you were in France relative to uh, I was in Bordeaux, UK. so th south. American, my, my fr French geography is kind of <laughs> a little bit shaky. I know it's this. Yeah. <laughs> it's somewhere I know, in France. I know where France is. I'm doing good at that. <laughs> like also, today we have Brand, uh, another guild member of uh, mine, and uh, someone I've done PvP with uh, quite a, a bit over the years. Brand, how are you doing today with your slideshow we've got going right now with your camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, aside from the video issues, I'm doing really good. Excited to be here. <laughs> Hope to uh, talk about a lot of cool and interesting th things. All right. Yep. Well, speaking of talking, today we are talking about bards. No, we had the bard release. What was it, two weeks ago? No. Uh, no. Yeah. Support, not bards. Yeah, support. They're bards. I don't. I don't <laughs> care are. if they call them support class. <laughs> They're the bards. I'm just calling them bards. I insist. Uh, we've got the Minstrel, the Scald, and the Dark Fool. Each one of them has songs, so they're bards. Might as well just call them. Um, they are the support class, though. They get all the cool buffs, all the speed enhancements, all the crazy stuff going on with the uh, in the game. Quick thoughts from both of you, if I can. What is your favorite aspect that they've announced just about the bard itself, all the bard classes? That they're for me, it's really that they're really focused on support, and uh, will be uh, kind of the the Swiss Army knife of uh, of buffs for uh, their group and their uh, and their raids. It's it's I'd say... going back to the bas basics. Yeah, um, I'd say for me, it's how they're supposed to. be be this anti-Zerg mechanic, or at least one method of combating Zergs, uh, and how their abilities are meant to work more against larger groups, which is something I haven't seen too much of. Yeah, it is a good point. I think we'll have to get out into that. I actually hadn't even made notes in the in the plan for tonight to, t to uh, talk about that, but I think we'll have to get into that a little bit. How they're going to interact group wise but also against enemy groups against the the dreaded zerg and we're not referring to any blizzard games here but uh, um other quick thoughts of the three bard classes minstrel scald and dark fool which uh dr derp has pointed out he considers to be the worst <laughs> naming ever um jester would work for me but i have a thing for jesters conceptually anyway not like a weird thing but <laughs> what do you th which of those three is your is your favorite just right off the bat um i'll have to say skulls uh if only because i'm a big fan of the nordic mythology and history and i just love the 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 skulls uh from history and the way it works um i think this called for me would have my vote okay brand uh I'm going to have to say Minstrel on this. As much as I really enjoy that Nordic mythology, uh, especially in games like Skyrim, uh, I'm a guitarist myself, so there's something about the loot that really appeals to me. Especially smashing people in the head with it? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Every time I think about it, I hear <laughs> boom in my head for some reason. But, um, I think it's because I played too much Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2. You can get a guitar in there, you can beat <laughs> yeah. people with it. And it makes that sound every time you hit them with it. But um, 
Yeah, it's kind of funny. Y'all both went conceptually. My mind immediately turns to the just the practical mechanics of them. I really like the the minstrels. Uh, as soon as they said that their their buffs layer and stack on top of each other a little bit of the same type, I was just like, oh, that's awesome. Of course, again, I have an obvious and immediate Arthurian bias every time we have these discussions. <laughs> that's besides <laughs> the point. Uh, I actually did like the Dark Fool, though, conceptually, besides the name, which I agree is a little bit me, but... <clears throat> Apparently, it's uh, from historical uh, characters. I don't know. I never heard about it. But it's like a historical character archetype, which I can I can yes. see and I can feel. I can I can agree with that. Something a bit more vague. Yeah. Yeah. The first thing I want to discuss in depth about the bards is something that you know they bring up and then they immediately. It's almost like they they dread talking about it because they're like, we don't want to <laughs> ty typify them as this. So we're just gonna go right into it. Just bam. <coughs> They're the speed class. So let's talk about speed buffs. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I miss the. Um, I hope it will be a bit like um, the EQ bards. Sadly, uh, from they didn't go into too much detail, but I I loved the um, the song twitching from EQ for the bards, mm -hmm. where basically your song was only lasting five seconds, so you had to type all the time and launch your songs all the time and the most skilled bards could keep up to four songs up all the time but it was really intense really intensive and skill wise it has it had a huge level uh, so I, I really like th this idea of stacking buffs of different use all at the same time okay and bar uh <laughs> brand your name is too close to bard I, i'm just gonna <laughs> call you bard now uh <laughs> Even though I don't think you're going to go around slaying dragons. I know how much you like dragons. Uh, <laughs> Brand. Yes. Specifically about speed buffs. How do you feel about this class being, as far as we know, the only class that really has any kind of substantial speed buffs for their allies? Uh, I think it's necessary. It gives them uh, a role, for one, especially in such a potentially large environment where quick travel is not going to be a thing, or at least in the not. form that most people are used to. Um, having a class to help get people to and from battlefields is necessary. Um, and it's interesting with these three in general, since they're so different, um, I think two of the three, their speed buffs are meant to work out of combat, where they take damage and that aura... Uh, mm -hmm. dissipates and it's no longer useful um, th so they're kind of meant to be that way to get to and from places I think yeah, it's interesting I mean that is kind of their their iconic thing that they're gonna have it's gonna make guarantee that they everyone wants a bard a support class yeah. to run with them because they're gonna they need the speed buff however they've also said during the stream a couple times they said they're not this they're not just the speed class that's not just what they do it's like they're trying to go okay stop focusing so much on the speed thing that's cool that's they have that it's huge and it's important but at the same time that's they don't seem to want them to be identified as the just speed as class yes and if you look at the um, at the components they already released it's not just the speed uh, the movement speed well the running speed there's also the movement speed in combat. Uh, they will uh, probably reduce the, the launching time for every abilities, which is huge in a combat. In PvP, it's going to be essential. That and they have AoEs, uh, which is also extremely important. And I think, for me, the most important about them is... You can't dispel their effects. That's the only class where you can't dispel the effect. You have to either disrupt or kill the bard to get rid of the effect. Otherwise, on the other player affected by that, it, it doesn't do anything. You can cleanse them all you want. It won't change anything. The song, the buff will come back. Yeah, it's good. It's a good point to bring up. And Dr. <clears throat> Derp in chat was uh, talking about how they don't want you... Uh, boxing the character. I assume he mean, he's referring to uh, multi-boxing, and uh, oh, into I could, boxing them in the, in a yeah. concept probably. 
Oh, that might he might be that either, but still both. both uh, I can see him yeah. not wanting to just go. Eh, I'm just I just multi box and pull up another bar to ke- give me speed buffs. They obviously yeah. can't have them rooted into only doing one thing because that's going to be boring during the game period. Uh, and they Definitely. don't want right. to you know box them into that role where that's all they do. But if they have effects, which they did mention, that's one of the cooler things they did point out during the stream that they can layer these effects all over you know, all of their allies and everything, and they can't be directly canceled out. You have to interrupt the source. Uh, what other buffs did they talk about that are, you know, cool besides just the speed the speed buff? Why aren't they just a speed buffing class, a buff bot, a speed buff bot, I should say. Yeah. What, else, what else did they have in their arsenal that you think is, uh, I guess... For me, it's, it's really the, the, the AoE's buff and, buffs and debuffs. Uh, for example, for the for the minstrel, uh, you have um, it's the uh, the melody of malady, uh, which is uh, basically a, a dot, an AOE dot, and it reduces the resistance for the for the poison and disease effects, so it boosts the damage from all the allies, and not just in the group because since it's an AOE affecting enemies. Anybody that does uh, damage, uh, disease, or uh, poison damage around the the bards uh, will have their DPS buffed. Yeah, there were se- there's several classes actually that have buffs. I guess that's where I'm getting into the thing. There's a couple class. Well, I shouldn't say several, but there are a couple other classes that had buffs. Like the uh, the abbot, as I recall, had some yeah. AOE buffs for allies. Um, I assume that, that's a gonna, hybrid. I assume so. they're going to stack a little bit. Yes, as well. well yeah, I hope so. Classes. Um, of course, the bard has just has pretty much just buffs. That's <laughs> I mean that's pretty what he much, does. Yes. He's running around buffing and debuffing. We get to a few of them, especially like the dark fool. I believe have more debuffs than the others. Yeah. Who did. Yes. They have a they have a shout that debuffs physical. Um, it's a physical debuff rather. Um, and increases panic rating and such. So all in all, just the AOE nature of them and, and their role in a large group is enough to have them wanted other than their speed. Yeah, and going back into the the group concept, the uh, buffing of their own group, they can buff their group. Uh, and of course, we'll, we'll mention a little bit in a second about how they can debuff and perhaps counter some zergs but within their own group there was a bit of discussion on whether what's what csc meant about the scope of their abilities um at one point they commented and kind of made it sound like their abilities would affect all their allies within a given distance but then in another comment they made it sounded to me like they were saying that it would only affect their group which don't exactly mean the same thing uh so I guess my my question is more: What do you think they need to work like? How how do you think they need to work? Should they affect everyone within range, or should it be a little perhaps more limited based on actual uh, group composition? Um, I think it sh- should be a little bit more limited, um, especially when it comes to having multiple guilds in in a battle and working with other groups from your realm. Um, you know, each group needs to work individually as well as cohesively with other groups. So they're all going to want their own support. They're all going to want their own well, they, composition. Well, they did say that the, the Bard's buffs will only work for the group they are in and not for everybody. Yeah, and that's what I meant. Because at one point they, they kind of implied to me that it was going to be a more wide-reaching thing. And then later on they seemed to backtrack that and say it yes. works for their group. But... The, when they were earlier on, they were talking about that. People were asking about soloing, and they they seem to suggest, oh yeah, you can solo with them, but you'll just be in the group, you know, in the raid and everything. And so I'm like, well, then how are their buffs yeah. working outside? If it only works in group, <clears throat> how does it affect the people in their realm if they're it's, not it's, in a group? Yeah, it's just I think it's just that they didn't want to say it's a class that will have a hard time soloing uh, in actual duels, a one v one. Uh, they will be, well, like pure healers, they're pure buffers, debuffers. So they're going to do a bit of damage, but not enough to be any of any relevance on a 1v1 scale, I'd say. 
And Super Dork brings up a very good point that this really is contingent on what the group size is, uh, which is pretty hotly contested. I, I know we started a <laughs> we started a discussion about this on yes. uh, yeah. our own forum, or was it? Yeah, it was it was our guild forum. Yeah. It wasn't realms and yeah. Guild. I had to think for a minute. I'm on so many forums. I don't know, <laughs> but I had to think about it for a minute. But uh, we started a discussion about this, and we're like, should it be eight man groups? Should it be seven man groups? Should it be raid size and just to hell with smaller groups um so there's really a lot of options in there and i i think whether or not their abilities can affect people outside of the group really depends on the group size because in my opinion yes. anyway if the group size is like eight people then perhaps the bard ability should affect people outside their group because that's not much of an aoe at that point you're like oh i got eight yeah. guys i can buff yeah uh, it's true i i'd say instead of limiting it to the group Having a number of people it can affect limit instead of just the group. Like it's a, say it, it can affect up to 20 people around you, and that's it. Past 20 people, it doesn't affect anybody else. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough in developments and mechanics yeah. to know how hard or how easy it would be to implement that kind of uh, buffs. Yeah, really, it's going to come yeah. down to things that they know that we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I do think a cap would be something needed because if, if you did, if you were able to, as a minstrel, buff everyone in your realm around you and those stacked, that would be quite chaotic. So there would need to be a limit. And at that point, it should just affect the group. Yeah, but... I guess one of the points I was trying to make when we were discussing this um, on the forum was the minstrel, for instance. They said the minstrel's abilities can stack on top of each other. Yes. If it only affects your group, how many minstrels are you going to have in your group? If you have a, si a group size of eight, are you really going to take more than one minstrel? Is the, is the stacking no. worth it? I doubt it. So that, tell, yeah. that suggests to me that the, the effect is going to be a little bit bigger, but we don't really know, uh, I guess, maybe at this point. Maybe also if it affects the group, it can, uh, depending on the group and raid mechanics, uh, a raid being multiple groups in the same, uh, same chat, for, uh, to reduce it to that, uh, maybe it can affect up to the raid. But yeah. I don't know, it's... It, it, it really will c come down to uh, pure mechanics and how easy it is to implement it, I think. And balancing so the bards aren't too, co are, yes. aren't too awesome. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, but there will be a cap also on the, on the stacking of the buffs. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and that's what I mean, but they still have to be impactful. It has to be able to stack but be yes. useful. If it's not yes. useful to have it stacked, then who's going to take more than one bard at that point? You just get yeah. Nobody. Whatever. You're um, going to have to. You're going to want uh, support or DPS or just tanks. However, uh, if they can if they can stack DPS buffs, and I'm running, <laughs> I'm running around with with like four archer with like four archers in my group, I would four totally. Archers and four. I would totally take two or three minstrels and be like, just stack those that, DPS that was... buffs on us. Come on. <laughs> that's that's not a. That's not a, an archery group anymore. That's artillery. I want my extra 2% DPS. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we also mentioned some of the bards do have some debuffing abilities. I mean, they have the AoE buff to help yeah. combat the Zerg. But what's to keep them from just blatantly helping the Zerg? What, how are they actually going to diminish the Zerg? Because they, ha they have AoE buffs. Now, having it be limited in size obviously helps combat the zerg issue and i think that's yes. the main reason they're going to look at limiting them and their the range of their impact yes but they do have some debuffs as well from what we've seen the, there's a few of them yes and um i think in part it's gonna have to be that that's why you might want uh more than one bard in your group because since they will have to jump from one song to another to actually have them stack and they, they will have to play with the, between the songs. Having one focused on buffing and one on debuffing uh, might be useful depending on how intense the fight is. Mm -hmm. Brand, you've done a fair amount of PvP. You used to lead some PvP groups for us uh, back in the day. Yes. 
how, just looking at the basic stuff we know about the Bard right now, how do you feel they would best be used in some of the PvP engagements group-wise? Uh, that is a tough question, because each of these Bards or support um, have very different mechanics, very different play styles, um... And with the introduction of boons and banes, each is essentially different, and each bard can be a different bard, even within the same realm. Um, but aside from the speed, I think their best use is going to be, be you know, kind of with the main group on the front line, uh, especially in siege battles. I think they might actually find the most use in something like that. But because each is so different, it's hard to really place them into a, a proper way, I, I think. is. I think yeah. we're going to see a, a bit of that with all the classes, really, because there's so many different paths yeah. and ways you can choose things. It's going to be a little bit difficult to just typify a single class and go, they're going to be yeah. here doing this role, uh, which I think is why it's one reason it's going to be so important to have guilds and to know the people in your you know, in your, in your group composition. Um Odovic brought up a good point going back to the speed buff. It does come back to the speed buff in, inevitably for them because they are the speed buff class. Uh, as much as that's not all that yeah. they are, it is more or less what they are as well. Uh, yeah. Having that speed buff does make it potential, give them the potential to make groups go off-road, which is what his point kind of is. You know, other groups might be that don't have bards might be more inclined to stick to the road, stick to the established paths, because they can travel faster. If you have bards, you can get off the road and start speed buffing, you know, and still travel at a yeah. decent speed without having to worry about where the roads are, catch up to people, maybe cut people off that are going on roads so you can get around them. In general... Catch them from behind, yeah maneuverability advantage um yeah one thing that came up a lot in the live stream that i wanted to bring up crowd control for some <laughs> reason i mean they, it gets asked in every live stream does yes this, does this class yes, have it, crowd it control <laughs> but i noticed with the bards it was really coming up like a lot like people were just like do they have crowd control do they have crowd control do they have crowd it was control? expected do they have yeah crowd <laughs> i think What's the because deal? uh <laughs> because in a lot of previous games, bards were uh, a lot in the crowd control uh, uh, thick of the game. Uh, I know that, for example, uh, in EQ, there were a lot like that uh, with uh, the mask, the sleep, uh, the, and the debuffs uh, to be more affected by those kind of things. Uh, I think in DAOC also a lot. I haven't played enough to really remember it but i think they were also big on cc's uh in the aoc so i think from their previous experience people assume that uh bars will be uh heavily focused on cc and they want cc's uh in the more traditional ways I, i've noticed a little bit of that there people really want the cc uh yes brand yes. i guess do you <laughs> do you think that the bard should have cc Right now, they don't look like they have like any CC, really. Um, I don't think it's needed. I, I really don't. I think they're they're very niche, and they're they were designed specifically for the larger group mentality. Um, which I mean, CC helps, but they're they're just not meant to do that. I don't think. Well, to be very honest, um, I think um, this game doesn't need CC. For me, CC is a remnant of the PvE gameplay where you needed to uh, to control uh, groups of mobs. For yeah. me, PvP doesn't need the hard CCs that you have. Interrupts, disrupts, etc. Yes, not the hard CCs that we used to see in other games, like the mess, like the sleep, like the roots. Maybe the roots, yes, but not the rest. It's not To me, it's not needed. Yeah, I actually agree. I think the the hard CC. I think I was gonna ask, jump that in there. I think hard CC is is the stipulation there. That's the key term. We don't really need the hard stuns and everything. The the absolute firm roots that keep you from doing anything. Um, I think 
I, I agree with City State. They've said a couple times that they think too much of that is actually detrimental to the PvP. No one likes to just stand there and not be able to do anything. It's not enjoyable. Exactly. Uh, I, I think there's plenty of soft stuns. There's plenty of, you know, the fighter can go around, can knock you around, can root you, can disrupt you. And the game does seem to be very focused on disrupting attacks and stopping them as they're in the middle of going rather than just stunning right. you and keeping you from doing anything. And I, I kind of like that direction. I think it's um, important to note. And if you've got, I think also one of the things is I think the one of the reasons the bard really doesn't want or need to have CC, and a lot of these other classes don't get much CC, is because the fighter has the knockback, has like a push, has a can disrupt people really. Easy, has a lot of disrupt. Um, looks like he might have some stun, some minor stuns going on. If he, they, we already have the CC class. It's the heavy fighter. Yes. If you start giving everyone else CC, who's going to play a <clears throat> fighter at that point? And another huge drawback of the hard CCs is 99, even actually 100% of the time, the classes that had the CC, the hard CCs, were ranged classes. That renders all melee classes irrelevant. Because if you're rooted, if you're messed, if you slept, you don't move. You don't get in in your range, and you don't do anything, and it makes playing me melee classes irrelevant, boring, not fun, and in the end, you don't have any people playing melee classes anymore. It's true. I think if yeah. uh, everyone outranges the melee the melee class, who you know, how do they even get in to exactly. do damage? And that's why I like them having most of the CC. I've always traditionally liked playing a tank anyway, so I'm a little, maybe a little bit biased with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and that's where the support comes in you know they're not just the, the speed class they're not just a buff and debuff but they offer the mechanics needed to get not just the range people but the melee people involved with the fight yeah Heracut or Heracut or Hera something Hera <laughs> in chat <laughs> asked uh, do we think that mages will have CC I think they I think they have two CC's in my opinion, one we've seen that they have walls. They can summon walls. I mean, that's a form yes. of CC. It's a very, it's a soft. It just blocks something off. You can, you can either have to go around or you take consequences for going in there, and it protects people. So it's a kind of a CC. Also, they have the CC of pure unadulterated damage. <laughs> it's, no, it's not a traditional CC. But in my opinion, if they can, <laughs> if they can sight you from 500 yards away and start pelting punishment on you, you're probably not going to run straight in that direction. That's pretty much. Unless you've got a healer, then well. <laughs> yeah, but you will still get damage, and the healer will uh, exhaust their resources, getting you in melee range. Yeah, but also so as. Haircut. You just answered your own question. What are you doing? <laughs> druids, have, <laughs> druids have tentacles. They're mages. They have tentacles. Um, yeah. I have noticed the TDD have a lot more crowd control spread around yes. than everyone else does. Yeah, but it seems like they it. they need to because they're more uh, guerrilla and and skirmish oriented. Uh, as they said in the in the in the cast, mm -hmm. they're good at running away. They're supposed to be good at running away, and they have to have tools for doing that. Yes, yes. Uh, even their, going back to the bar, their speed buff. They are the only one yes. that have a speed buff that's not canceled by damage. The Minstrel and the Scald can both do speed buff, but if, they, if you take damage, it drops it off of you. It's the only buff, mm -hmm. bard buff that can be taken directly off of you. Um, yeah. But the Dark Fool can give you a speed buff that ramps up more gradually over time, but it can't be interrupted. But you do take more damage. So if you're standing out in the middle of the field, take, get, taking shots to the face, and the bard goes, hey guys, let's speed you up. Everyone's going to cry out, no! <laughs> and then your whole group's going to get wiped out. Um, yeah. Uh, to answer Heracut, um, I think the tentacles are more going to be a slow and dot as you go through them than really a root. Yeah, I'm sorry, I misunderstood that. I thought you were just saying that they had tentacles, and that was and that was the answer. Uh, I think the tentacles will be a, some form of CCC, uh, CCC, crowd control, <laughs> control. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> some form of CC, but it won't be a hard CC like uh, we traditionally think about in most MMOs. Yeah. 
there's another thing that I have that's a pet peeve that came up again with the Bard. And this <laughs> one comes up with every single class live stream. And I'm probably going to set some people in chat off about this, but it is a pet peeve of mine. Why do people keep asking about solo play with these classes? I, want somebody, uh, I really want someone to explain they, it to me. Because a lot of people don't understand what how the game uh, is meant to be played. They're still in the frame of mind of a PvP PvE game where you need to solo to level. So uh, they're still asking that because they think they will have to go solo and kill a bunch of things or, or of people in, in there to, uh, to actually level. They don't understand that it won't work that way. Yeah, I think it's a, a number of things that. I, I don't think uh, Doctor Derp. I don't think they need to play solo to grief. They they will find a way anyway to grief. But I think that is a good point, though. I think some of them, probably not all, some people just like yeah. the solo, I guess. But I do yes. think a good portion of them are the are the core that they've kind of tried to prevent the uh, the stealth class from being able to do, which is yes. to go around solo at long distance, just track people down, appear, stab them, and kill them. And they're trying to work that into the game somehow anyway, even though the devs have said they don't want to do that. <laughs> yes. It, it's an empowerment thing. You know, if you can handle that kind of situation or any situation by yourself you feel pretty epic and, and pretty capable and it's you know it's about flexing your muscles at that point and in, in some cases it's probably just uh the that some people aren't necessarily interested in being in the large groups they shy away from it for some reason or another so they feel forced to be solo um so that's all they're looking for that's all they've been used to yeah, there's definitely that. Um, Haircut, to answer your question, I th that's what I think. I think heavy fighters are really the main solo class. If you want to play solo and you want to run around, roam around and gank people or roam around and do random things, heavy fighter is going to be yeah. your best choice because it's got the most all-around survivability. Or the mage. And maybe the ma mage, but you're real squishy as a mage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, also, to go on Old Vic and Ibsen, um, some people do just want to go out there and do stuff. They don't want to have to wait on a group. But I think, I think CSE, I think the devs, uh, I think it was Mark Jacobs specifically that said this and during one of the last two live streams. Somebody, again, asked about Solo. They asked about Solo every single live stream. And he said, um, actually, I think it was the, I don't remember. It was one of the classes. I don't remember which live stream it was right now. Anyway, he said, if you're talking about soloing, and going with the raid, if you're talking about going to a, a keep siege or PvPing in a group but not joining that group, you can do that. That's fine. They're not going to have any problems doing that. You can solo but still be with other people. That's mm -hmm. that's going to work fine. However, yeah. I forget which class he was referring to for this particularly, but if you solo by yourself and you're out in the middle of a field, um, for most classes, that's not going to work very well. For the mage, that's probably not going to work very well. For the bard... Your support class, you're supposed to support other people. Probably not going to work very yeah. well. Actually, I right. think it was talking specifically about the last reveal because he was talking about how they can actually solo a little bit better than most, yeah. that being the spirit mages. Um, so that's the thing. It comes down to a question. What do people mean? Do they mean they want to solo, in, as in they just don't want to bother getting a group, they just want to go out there where people are fighting, help out a bit, I think that's fine. I think that works perfectly fine in this game. If people are wanting to solo and go out on their own in the middle of the PvP area and hunt down stragglers, I think they're going to be limited in choices yeah. to make that viable. And I think that's intentional. Yeah. Yes. And, and in that well, scenario... You you will have the best. possibility to solo. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, uh, in that scenario, if you're capable of soloing yet still being within the large group, area you know with the fights going the support class shows the best example of that where they're still buffing debuffing and they're not even in a group yeah i think the main scenario for soloing real slow soloing would be uh, archers maybe heavy fighters or mages going around and hunting crafters collecting materials that's yeah. about the, the, the closest you will have from real solo play. If you're talking about 
soloing, going out to kill. Then there's other options. Yes. Crafters certainly can solo. I mean, if they're gathering materials, soloing probably not the best idea. Going to get killed. Yeah. <laughs> but they might not get killed. They might get away with it. <coughs> then, of course, we have scouts, which are designed, almost basically yes. designed for solo play. Um, yeah. So there are, I think there are some options. It just kind of bugs me that people keep asking about it. And then they ask about it sometimes for classes that I'm like, like, like the bard. <laughs> They're a support class. Can what? they solo? Why would you solo with a support class? Okay. That's like asking it's if a like, healer can solo. Exactly. It's going to come out. They're going to do the healer live stream. Yes, I guarantee you will. someone asks if they can they solo. Will. Next week, right? Next week. Probably next week. <laughs> Wednesday. It's probably going to happen. Wednesday. And I'm going to be sitting at work at my desk watching the live stream going. And face palming. Or desk palming. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh Question for the panel from Dr. Derp. How well is CU really doing at non-mirroring? doesn't fall on my question, I, but we will throw it out there. It can be barred-wise anyway. How well do you all think they're doing? At I think they're uh, actually doing really good. Exceptionally good. Uh, and the support class is a great example of that. Because if you really look at uh, their, their mechanics, particularly in speed in this case, the minstrel is, seems and comes off as a class that hits you with everything they've got initially and then ramps down over time where the dark fool is the complete opposite where they steadily progress over time and they get stronger and stronger uh and the skull is kind of in between where there isn't any sort of ramping it's just there yeah and and that alone if that transitions over into the other abilities affects how each realm handles situations very differently yeah and honestly, when they announced non-mirrored classes, uh, my first thought was, it's going to be a gimmick. It's just going to be <laughs> some fla some flavoring, uh, another name, another character design. Uh, but actually, each of them, for each tri trio we've seen so far, they are different visions of the same concept. Because they... I think what they did was they didn't think about a class, but a concept. So after that, with the flavor of each realm, they thought about how to play the class in relation with uh, the realm's spirit, basically. So I really think uh, they, they are doing really good at non-mirror classes, and I'm really glad they're doing that. I tend to agree. I was a little bit like you at first when they made, when they said non-mirrored classes. I was kind of like a lot of other people. They talked about Dayok and having non-mirrored classes, but normally like one class on a, one faction would have the CC, but then it would be a different class on the other faction that had yeah. it. And so essentially it's kind of non-mirrored, but it's flip-flopping. And that's kind of how I expected it to be in this game, which I wasn't super thrilled about. I was like, that's cool, yeah. but it's pro it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's kind of non-mirrored, but there's still something yeah. that can kind of do the same thing on that faction somewhere, uh, at least to some extent. However, yeah. I've noticed so far it doesn't seem to be quite, it seems to be mitigated a bit in Camelot Unchained. They have adjusted it and i think the i think the st the origin of that is by adjusting the overall combat strategy of each realm the arthurians are defensive mm -hmm. they like to they have a slower pace of combat they like to hit like a truck this is my impression so far they like to hit like a truck and then they kind of subside a bit and they just endure like you have the archers yeah. that can just they're going to basically unload on you and then they're kind of at a slower rate of dps at that point um, the tanks stand there and take all as much punishment as you could possibly deal out, dish out to them. The Vikings have that very aggressive stance, very close melee, very mobile. The TDD, hit and run. They've got lots of CC, lots of uh, status effects and things. So by instilling a different sort of th combative theme for each realm, they've been able, I think, to have non-mirrored classes and I don't know what this was, but have non-mirrored classes while still keep while keeping, I guess, from just flip-flopping roles around. Yeah. On each. And each I round. think it also comes from the fact that there's no PVE. In other games, you needed the same abilities to be able to face the PVE challenges. So you needed this, the abilities. So if you didn't put them in one class, you had to put them in another. So each uh, faction could face the PVE with the same tools. If you don't have any PVE, you don't have that problem. 
So you have you can take more liberties with what kind of abilities each realm has. Haircut asked about realm points and realm abilities. They've said almost nothing about realm yes. points per se. I yeah. do think there'll be some kind of like realm rewards tracking or something, but yeah. that's totally, you know, whoosh, 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 up in the air. Um, they, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we do have realm rewards on steroids as a stretch goal that we achieve, so yeah. there's going to be some type of realm rewards, just what it Definitely. is. Definitely. Yeah. I, I unfortunately do not know. Uh, going back to bards. I did have one last question that I wanted us to discuss and consider about bards themselves. Gearing. All they really said was that their instrument for two of them is going to be kind of important. For the minstrels, it's most important. They got that loot. Yes. They're jamming yeah. down on that loot. Uh, but the crafters have to be involved. The scald yeah. is just chanting things. But the, the crafters have to be involved in all three of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the for the scald, since they don't have any instrument, they're going to need weapons like an, like any other class. So they will need weapons and armor uh, for the minstrel. Instead of the weapon, it's going to be the, the instrument. I really want to see uh, from the concept art we had for the gargoyles. The loot axe. The, the loot <laughs> axe, exactly. The big That's loot. the one thing I want to see, <laughs> definitely. But, uh, yeah, exactly. Like uh, Dr. Derb said, the Skulls use uh, melee weapons, so there is still a crafting uh, component in that. And for the Dark Fools, they will have also some instrument. I'm, I was sad when they said there would be no backpipes. But that's the thing. That, that's the question with it. Uh, they kind of, they, well, they suggested, you know, the weapons, the gear does boost your abilities in various ways. Yes. Uh, for the mage, they have the spell book to boost their spells. The minstrel's got a loot to boost their spells. Yeah. Is the skald going to sing into his sword and go vibrate nope. with my voice? Because Whoa. they they don't they don't have that. Yeah. That's the counterpart part from not needing a, an instrument. They instead of uh, they won't have any boost from any instrument, but they will have the boost from their damage. So they're they're so you, so you more they're, hybrid than any of the other bards. So you think I their agree. songs might be weaker? But, but their damage, but yeah, they, 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 comp that would, they comp that the compensate balance. that with the damage. It's interesting. Definitely uh, agree. I think it was was it the skull that had the effects that lingered after they switched songs. Yes, also. And that could be a way to compensate for that. Also, each one of their yes. song, each one of their chants is a it little lasts, weaker, but it lasts longer and can Their songs last la last longer than any of the others. Also, yes. It's interesting. Now, that would be an interesting take on it. I hadn't considered that, I'll be honest. Uh, yeah. I was just and and I'm liking, uh, they mentioned the use of different types of instruments. So these concept arts we're seeing for like the minstrel and the dark fool, they're not just going to be a loot-based archetype. Yeah. They're going to have access to different instruments, and each of those instruments are going to provide different buffs, different avenues of play style. Okay. Sounds fair to me. Following yeah, up. Odzolvik, uh, put, uh asked the question, how will songs improve through use, cheaper cost, better range, more effective? I think all, all of that. Of them. All of them. Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to be all of them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the more they will use them <laughs> and the more they will use specific types of songs, the more effective they will be, the less they will cost. Maybe not the range, because that would be a bit too much. But the cost and the... Uh, and the quality and the the overall power of the effects, yes, definitely. And I think how it how it grows is really going to be dependent on the component system, because we yes. know you can build your own abilities. So mm -hmm. the and that that is actually a good question for the component system altogether and progression. If you create an ability with certain components, do your component ab parts for that ability increase in potency and level, or is it just the core ability itself that increases in potency? That's that's a good question. We don't really have an answer to that. No idea. Uh, I would like to say it's would, the components because the probably. spell itself is made from, from all these components. Yes, so. I, I would agree with that. Or... Is it the entirety of that ability? The ability no, plus components? The, the, co the, co the combination result? No. I think it will be the basic abilities. Because that's uh, what you're using, though. You're using a fire wall. If you yes, but you're using the wall and the fire. 
I guess that we really don't know, but um, no, we don't. Uh, it could but, be it could nope. be a mix as well. It could be yes. your yeah. single ability that is the fire wall gets more powerful, but also your wall shape gets a little bit more powerful too as you yeah. do things lasting like longer, being yeah. more effective. Uh, either way, Big, our speed bigger. is going to progressively get faster and faster and yes. faster the more we use it. To a cap. <laughs> to a cap. They can't have yes, a cap. Of course. <laughs> We're not having celerity using vampires or uh, <laughs> Matrix dodging people running all over the place. Yeah, no. We'd break the server. Quick uh, travel. But to wrap everything <laughs> up, I guess, my final question for the two of you and for myself is, what part of the bards do you think is most problematic? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. It is a good question. I w- yeah, I would say... Um, they have all the disadvantages from the uh, from the mage, which is the squishiness, uh, uh, without the the advantage. So they are squishy. They will probably, for some of their um, uh, abilities and instruments, have to stay static. So it, they will have a lot of problem uh, in battlefields. I think. And um, that's probably what's going to be, especially for the, for the minstrel, where the instrument is capital to using the abilities. Uh, they will probably have a huge problem with the interrupts and with the disrupts, uh, which will be a bane for them. Brand. <laughs> I, I'm going to step out of the mechanics side of it, and I think the biggest issue or concern for this trio is the social expectation of their use and and that we've already seen it and that people are calling them the speed class and if we can get out of that and branch away from that and really see what they can do I think they're going to shine pretty well but people have to understand that that's not what they're about that's not that's not everything anyway so that's a good point I think for me, the most complicated part is going to be the discussion we've already kind of had a little bit on and off. The group size discussion. Everyone keeps going, what is the group size? What? But but more so for them, group how many, size, people, how many people they can affect with their abilities. Because that's just going to be a huge balancing issue that I know CSE is going to have to really crunch numbers on. They're, going to be, they're probably going to have somebody over there doing math. Someone else over <laughs> here just feeeling it out. Going, oh, they feel so powerful. Uh but you know, they're pro- I imagine they'll throw they'll throw them into beta and ramp them up crazy high or something, and then just throw them out there, and we'll all be like, "Oh my God, bards are so OP!" And then they'll you know slowly whittle them down until they figure out the right number. Um, Could be you know, spawn eight hundred bard bots. <laughs> <laughs> the power cord. Yes. <laughs> Server wide power cord. Uh, but anyway, that is pretty much it. That is the bard. In a nutshell, at least from our perspective, from what we've seen yeah. so far, I uh, want to thank everybody for coming out and asking us some very good questions and some very difficult questions yes. that I couldn't answer because I don't have that kind of insider information. 